We often talk about some habits to start in order to improve your style, but in this video, I wanted to talk about some habits I had to stop in order to get a style that I actually loved. And they're actually quite common. Now, I do believe our style is always evolving based on what's going on in our life and our lifestyle, but these habits were not specific to me. I think a lot of women fall into these traps and I still sometimes do, so let's get started. I had to get out of the habit of always trying to look trendy or like wearing the cool thing or that I had to be wearing a trend or the it thing in order to look really stylish. I found that the pressure of trying to find the it thing to wear just made it feel very overwhelming and frustrating. And I would go to my closet and often end up wearing just the same thing over and over again, even with a closet full of clothes, because it's like I was always trying to buy some of these trends and cool items, but they weren't actually me. Spanx leggings are an item that comes to mind when I think about this. Do you remember about 10 years ago, they were huge. And I would see women wearing these Spanx leggings and they would look so cute, it would look so good on them. But the thing is, I really wasn't a leggings person. That really wasn't my style, or it just wasn't something I really like loved on myself. But everyone was loving them, it was a huge trend. And they look so good on everybody else. I finally bought a pair. Maybe I wore them twice, but I realized that just really wasn't for me. Even though it was a big trend, it just, it just wasn't something that I really liked wearing. I've actually realized that a lot of us looking stylish and not boring is A, wearing clothes that are very comfortable that we feel good in. And then for me personally, a lot of the times it's, I love adding some cool jewelry or some interesting accessories. Sometimes it's still a really trendy top or really trendy shoe, but it has to be one that really personally resonates with me. There's one woman on Instagram. I love her Instagram. I love her style. I'll put her up here. Her name is Monroe Steele, and she has the coolest style. Like I love looking at her outfits she puts together. I get so much inspiration from them. But if I were to go and try to wear exactly what she's wearing, and I do feel like she has like, you know, it girl energy, like it's just a really cool style. But if I tried to wear those outfits, I would just probably look like I was wearing somebody else's clothes and it's just not going to work on me. And so what I realized is I can get inspiration from her and there may be a piece in there or just the, the way she styled things that gives me an idea with my own clothes, but I won't try to go run out and just copy her style because I know that it's ultimately not going to work for me. Another really bad habit I had to stop, and I still fall into the trap sometimes, but I had to stop buying more clothes and going shopping to buy things when something else wasn't working out in my life. Like if I felt bad or having a bad day or not feel good about myself or whatever, um, you know, I would go shopping. Retail therapy is a thing, and I'm not gonna lie to you, it really did work. It helped. I felt amazing. I went out, bought some new clothes, bought some new cute things, and it, I felt amazing for that day. Um, and then maybe the first time that I wore it, but that feeling did not last. Going out and buying something really fabulous and fun when you're feeling like total crap about yourself is a really fun thing to do. But as we know, it only lasts for so long. And usually if it's not something we really needed or really wanted or really fit us really well, it's just gonna sit in our closet, create clutter, and we'll have a closet full of clothes and nothing to wear. I realized, of course, years and years later that it's never going to be these new pieces that make me love how I look or fix what's going on in my life. A lot of it was more, I just needed to work on myself and how I felt about myself and felt in my own skin, rather than just buy new clothes to try to band-aid the problem. I've now realized that if I don't eat things that support my energy levels or do something physically active most days of the week or talk nicely to myself, then I'm not really gonna feel that great in any of the clothes I'm wearing anyway. Now I love to still go shopping, but I don't go with the intention of having to find something or having to buy something. Um, I usually know kind of what I'm looking for, and if I find it, wonderful. And if I don't, that's okay too. One habit that I have added to my life in the last few months that has really made a difference in my energy levels and my digestion and just how I feel throughout the day is AG1. I drink it first thing in the morning. You don't have to drink it first thing in the morning, but it starts my day off right. So AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that helps fill in the gaps of your diet. I do try to eat a generally healthy lifestyle with a few donuts and brownies mixed in there. But with AG1, I was able to get rid of a lot of these random supplements that I was taking. AG1 features 75 vitamins and minerals, pre and probiotics. Plus it contains a lot of plant extracts that help support my stress levels and my mood. 
AG1 also tastes refreshing and slightly fruity, but not overpowering, which is one of the reasons why I like to drink it first thing in the morning, even before I have my coffee. I also always bring AG1 whenever I travel. Now, if you would like to try AG1, you can follow the QR code or scan the link in my description box and you can get five free travel packs of AG1 plus a bottle of D3 and K2 with your first purchase. I will leave everything you need to know to get started in, in the description box below and let's continue. If you went through your adolescent or teenage years in the 90s or early 2000s, then you might resonate with this one and it took me years, I mean years, to even realize I was doing it and to put a stop to it. But it was the habit of trying to buy the smallest size I could possibly fit into. I remember one time when I was in really great shape, I was able to fit, squeeze into a size 25 jeans. I have never been a size 25 jeans in my entire life. Never will, don't even care to be. But I was so excited that I was in a 25 that of course I bought the 25. I wore those jeans maybe one time. But I feel like when I was growing up, everything was very fitted and tight. And so we all wanted to have like the tight little tees and tight jeans and low rise. But it took me years to realize that I was basically buying the wrong size pants. I always felt like jeans and jean shorts were really uncomfortable because they just rode up and were uncomfortable around my waist and everything. And it wasn't until I finally got the right size that um, I realized, oh, it's just, I mean, I was just buying the wrong size all these years. If I just would have gone up a size, not only do they look better, but they feel better. Now I love jeans. And the problem, of course, with buying things that are a little bit too small is that they don't make you look skinnier. They just actually don't make you look very good. Doesn't matter how expensive it is. It's not gonna look very stylish because it looks like it just doesn't fit. It's not gonna look that great on you. Um, it's just, it's really not having any kind of positive effects whatsoever, except for maybe you're in your head, you're like, yay, I can wear the size 25, even though I'm a size 27. And it can actually sometimes make you look bigger than you are. As I've gotten more in tune with what looks good on me, I've learned what looks good on my shape. And I've realized that my bottoms and tops being a little more relaxed and then pulled into the waist is 100% my jam. And not only does it give off a more relaxed and effortless look, which is what I love, but it's also way more comfortable. Now I do still love things to be fitted sometimes depending on what it is. But what I'm referring to is just things that are just, they're just too tight, too tight here, too tight here. And you know, it just doesn't feel good. doesn't look good. Another habit I had to stop is I would only go shopping for prints and trend pieces and um, going out statement items and you know, loud, interesting, fun things. And those are really fun items to shop for. And I think most of us can say, when we go shopping, we're not like, I wanna find a good basic white tee. You know, we wanna find the fun, cool, interesting thing. But the problem is, a lot of times those things find you. It's really hard to say, I'm gonna go out this Saturday afternoon for two hours and um, I'm gonna find this bold, wonderful piece that screams my name and looks amazing and I'm gonna live in for 20 years. It just doesn't happen. It's more like it just kind of comes to find us. And as I've said in several videos, I do think there is a room for you in your closet for these items, but the majority of your closet should consist of pieces that you can wear every day. It works with your lifestyle and you can wear in different ways. So if you're only going shopping for these fabulous, fun, printed, bold, statementy pieces, you know, you're probably not gonna have a closet that's super functional. Now, I know it sounds really boring, but since I really worked on getting the basics in my closet to ones that I really love and just some pieces that I felt like were more classic or just ones that could be styled different ways. I've really just, I've loved my closet more A and B, I don't really feel so tempted like I'm missing out on something or like I'm missing things from my closet because I really love a lot of the things in my closet. I have outfits to wear. And so I don't feel like, ah, I'm just missing all the things. So I think that may have gone hand in hand with also working on myself and um, also working on my clothes and my closet and what I was putting on my body. But in the end, I know that those old habits were just not working. I stopped buying super cheap and super trendy jewelry all the time. I found that most of it just didn't hold up for the most part. And then even if it did, I would wear it a few times and then get, I would get tired of it 
really quickly. I found that since I started buying higher quality jewelry that are in either classic styles or just something unique that I love just because, I not only spend less money on jewelry since I'm not constantly going through pieces, but I also don't get tired of them nearly as fast. I also feel like a lot of higher quality jewelry just looks higher quality. And especially because I like to wear a lot of basic clothes and sometimes a lot of really inexpensive clothes, I like to put on more high quality jewelry. I feel like it balances it out and it just makes my outfit look the way that I want. A habit I have literally struggled with my entire life and comment below if you also feel my struggles, but I can be a very disorganized, cluttery person. Have I come a long way? Yes, I have come a long way. You don't even, you don't even understand how far I have come. I used to have the most disorganized closet, disorganized clothes. It could be the middle of summer and I would still have big sweaters just staring at me in the face in my closet every day or um, the middle of winter and I would have sundresses hanging up still because I never put them away or move them somewhere. I would have clothes in my closet that didn't fit that were, you know, for an evening or it just, it just made no sense. And I had so much clutter in my closet space and in my drawers and then just felt like I had nothing to wear. And of course that was only one of the reasons because you know you look at all the other bad habits I have and there's multiple reasons, but that was a big problem. So I tried different organization techniques with my closet. I think I um, hung things, you know, long to short. I hung everything up at one point and hardly anything in drawers. I tried to do the hanger switching, you know, if you don't wear it in six months or whatever, you get rid of it, that kind of thing. I just, none of it has really worked. And the only thing that has really worked for me and it's worked for me for years is I love color coordinating my closet. I would show you a video, but my closet is really small. And every time I try to record a video, it just, it looks a lot worse than it is, but now it's color coordinated. Um, I do have things kind of organized by like dresses and pants and then tops are, it is just, it works so well. So if I have a blue top, I go just stick it with the blues. If I have a um, ivory top, I have many of those, I just stick it with the ivories and it just makes things look so much more organized. And then also, as I mentioned in many videos, I edit my closet often. So especially going from the colder months to the warmer months. I definitely pull those things out. I store them under my bed or I put them in my upstairs closet, but I get rid of things or get them out of my closet front and center that are just, I'm not gonna be wearing during this season. Having a closet with clothes in it right now that fit me right now, they work for their weather for the most part that we're having right now, um, it's just made such a big difference in making it less frustrating to get dressed, to find outfits, to find clothes to wear. And I also have a lot less clothes than I ever did before when I was just cramming things in my closet, but I have so much more to wear. For most of my life, and I still make this mistake a lot of times, but I would wait till the very last minute to, to get dressed, to figure out what, what I was gonna wear. And so, on the bigger end of this is maybe it was a big event or something I wanted to look a certain way for and I would get the idea in my head. I'm like, I'm gonna wear that top and that pair of pants and those shoes. And then the evening would come and I would have an hour left before we're supposed to go and I would put that outfit on and lo and behold, it would not look the way I wanted it to. And so I'm scurrying around trying to find something else to wear and I end up wearing something. I'm not really happy the with, with the way I look and this all could have just been avoided if I would have just tried on the thing maybe a couple of days early and just figured it out in advance. At least, at least maybe that morning even, not right before I'm supposed to leave. Meanwhile, I had a friend who was religious about picking out her outfits ahead of time and she always looked so good. No matter if it was casual, dressy, somewhere in between, she just always looks so put together. And now I've mentioned before in recent years, and it's a habit I'm still trying to break, is I will wait to the last minute to put on my jewelry and accessories. And I found that that's a lot of times a big part of my outfit or just something that I personally really love. Like, you know, I like having certain pieces in part of a basic outfit. So to wait for the last minute to decide what to wear, um, doesn't make any sense. And also I don't just do this for big events anymore. If I have a certain day where I know it's gonna be a hectic morning and I wanna look a certain way, I pick out my outfit the night before. It just relieves so much stress and headache. And honestly, people who do that just look more stylish because they've given, given themselves enough time to figure out what they're gonna wear. They look more intentional. It just, it just really, it really works. Another bad habit I used to have, and I still have this habit sometimes, and current, 
current days, but this was a really bad habit in my 20s when I lived in New York City. But if I wasn't going somewhere, like meeting up with people or, or going somewhere special or going out or something, I would just look like total crap. I was usually walking around New York City or taking care of things, and so I wasn't really concerned about how I looked. But often, I would get a call from a friend, say, hey, uh, we're all going to whatever, or hey, I'm in this area, do you wanna meet for lunch, or something like that, and I'm like, uh, I can't go like this, I look terrible. It literally took me until I got into basically my late 30s until I realized that I need to actually have a closet with some casual clothes that look good, that I like wearing, that are still really comfortable, and I can wear those on those days instead of just looking like a bum. Now I have some really good basics that I love. I really focused on finding a casual style that I personally love and I find it just as easy to throw on these basic and casual clothes that I love just as much as the sloppy ones. Now hand in hand with that, the bad habit I have nowadays that I have really, really been working on a lot and I've mentioned it before, but I will go work out in the morning and, and I don't really have any place specific to go that day except for running errands and just working from home and things and I'll just stay in my workout clothes all day long. And it's fine, you know, every once in a while, but if I do that multiple days in a row, I start to just feel bad about myself and Ugh, I just have low energy. It just, it really affects my mood. And so I've learned that maybe a day or two here and there, it's fine. But for the most part, I need to get myself dressed. Even if I'm not gonna be seeing anybody that day or going anywhere specific, I need to just get myself dressed. Let me take a shower, um, you know, put on something that's decent and comfortable that I can work from home in, but I actually feel good in. And this is another habit that I, I, st I still fall into to this day, but I try to be more aware of it and just what I'm doing. But I would buy the same thing over and over and over again. And a lot of times it wasn't anything really super awesome. It's more like I would, you know, really, really self-conscious about my midsection. And so I loved these big balloon tops. And so I would, if I found one, I would buy it. It didn't really make me feel super fabulous either. It just, is something I felt comfortable in. But now the other direction I could go is I do really like something, it looks great, I feel great in it, and then I just keep buying it. So for instance, I mentioned this in another video, but button down shirts, love button down shirts, love a good button down. So I kept finding ones that I really, really love and I just kept buying them. And eventually I had to stop and think, Anna, do you really need 30 button downs? And now I still have quite a few, but I've stopped myself that I don't need any more. This is a bonus habit because I was gonna keep it to 10, but it's gonna be 11 because this is another one that I used to do. And I can honestly say I don't do this as nearly as much as I used to. Um, and if you are doing it, it's also a good time to start being aware of this. But I don't, or I had to stop comparing myself to other women. And of course I do still find myself comparing myself to other women occasionally, but a lot of times I can stop myself and especially if it's on social media, I can say, okay, I know this is their highlight reel. This is like the best of the best. And I know, we all know that what people show on social media is it's not an actual portrayal of their life. You know, we have family pics and pics of me and my husband. And even when me and my husband were having like really rough times a few years ago, I mean, if you look on our social media account, you'd be like, oh, what a happy couple. Like, oh, they look so great and wonderful. Like, no, we were having lots and lots of problems. But um, of course, I'm not gonna show a picture of us fighting and yelling at each other. <laughs> so, you know, you just gotta be careful about comparing your life to somebody else's life. And also, you don't know what they've been through to get them there and all that kind of stuff. And then also comparing our bodies to other women's bodies. You know, whenever people have um, compared themselves to other women that don't even have the same body shape, it just, it's like, it just, you're comparing apples to oranges. And you know, sometimes people are genetically blessed with a good booty. I was not, probably doesn't matter how many squats I do. I'm probably never gonna have like this perfect booty. So I'm not gonna compare myself to these women who do. And not only that, but a lot of times when we compare ourselves to women who, for me, it's a lot of times I'll look at women at the gym that are in just really great shape. There's one woman that goes to my gym and she's in there almost every time that I'm in there. And I go for maybe 20 minutes. Like I have, I'm getting in there, I'm getting my weights in, you know, but I'm not spending an hour, hour and a half in the gym unless I'm forced to. But she is in the best shape and she's probably a little bit older than me. Um, she's toned and just, you know, looks really good. Like she looks really strong, but like, you know, really good shape and everything. And I would love to be in that good of shape. 
but I know that well, that woman spends a lot of time in the gym. You know, she does all the things like that is a top priority for her. Am I willing to spend that much time in the gym to get that way? Not right now, maybe some other time, but it just, it's not going to happen right now. So I do what I do and I'm, you know, I am where I am and I'm, I'm okay with that, but it's just, you, it's hard to really sit there and compare yourself to like a movie star who they're literally, their whole life is to be a beautiful wrinkle free, um, slender teeth, perfect person. That's basically their job. So it would be ridiculous for us to compare ourselves to them. If you find yourself comparing yourself, find yourself comparing yourself to other women often, um, you really need to just pull that back because that is a never ending, it's it just, it's gonna eat, it's gonna sit there and oh, well she probably has it easy and she has this and she's probably naturally this and I don't have that and I wish I did and, um, and then it can turn into jealousy and just negative things and so it's important to take all that energy and spend it working on yourself. If someone has a better style than you or um, looks better than you or is more muscular or something, the better question would be, how can I improve my style or how can I improve my body or how can I improve my um, life or situation that just you're so much, your brain power is so much better spent doing that than focusing on somebody else and what they have and you don't even know the full story. Last thing I'll say is sometimes I'll come across a TikTok where somebody is just doing so much research to basically tear somebody down, like a, a celebrity or something about why they don't deserve what they have, or, you know, let's cancel this celebrity or this really rich person or something. And, and they just have all this research about then 12 years ago, they did this and blah, 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 blah. It'll be like a five minute long TikTok. I don't obviously watch all of it, but I, but I can see where they're going. And what I'm thinking is if you spent that amount of time, which, clearly took you probably days to figure all that out. If you spend all that time, instead of working on tearing somebody else down, what if you worked on yourself and just asked yourself these questions? How can I, you know, improve whatever my life or how can I get to a point where that stuff doesn't matter? Just how can I focus on your own life on getting it better? So I'm rambling now, I'm sorry. It is kind of a, a little bit of a, not a hot button for me, but I just look at that sometimes and I think what a waste of energy. It's, you know, it's just such a waste of energy being jealous of somebody or hating on somebody else. It does nothing. It literally, they're over there being living their life and just happy and living just fine. And you're the one who's sitting there harboring all these negative feelings. And um, it just, it's not gonna make your day better. I mean, it's just, it's a bad trap. So back to the original point, stop comparing yourself to other women and other people. <laughs> um, nobody's perfect, literally nobody. And you don't know anybody's backstory or what they've been doing or how they got there or what they haven't been doing. So it's just important to take everything with a grain of salt. Anyway, I hope you liked this video and I hope it was helpful. I hope I, um, um, maybe I hit some bad habits that you currently are making or you have made in the past. I would love to hear from you or any that you resonate with. You know, and again, I still make a lot of mistakes, all, lots of mistakes, probably more mistakes than I don't make mistakes. But, um, but these are just things that I've learned along the way that really were not helping me, don't help me if I continue to do them. And so I thought it would be a good video to share. Anyway, let me know what you think. Make sure to check out AG1 if you are interested in living a healthier lifestyle with AG1. And I will leave everything you need to know in the description box below. Make sure to check out this video up here if you wanna continue on this kind of subject. And um, I will see you next time.